All right, Uncle Sam FM here. I think this is episode seven of my Dynasty Builder save, and this is actually kind of a special episode. Um, mostly inspired because I'm going to show you my first match in the U.S. Open Cup. It's actually the fourth round, which is where MLS clubs enter the U.S. Open Cup, at least in this uh, season. And I'm doing this kind of special episode because last night, actually, at, at the time of the recording of this video, was the fourth round of the real life US Open Cup where um, the MLS teams all entered the cup and the Houston Dynamo took on an amateur squad actually NTX or North Texas the Rayados they are a um, an amateur team who they'd won I think three or four well they obviously won the first second third rounds in the uh, Open Cup to advance they did pull a pretty big cup set over the Oklahoma City Energy, which is a USL team, which is the second division, but that's still a um, relatively impressive win uh, for an amateur squad. They do have, um, they did have Jose Berkeaga Jr., who is a former um, U.S. Youth International. I don't think he ever got any caps with the full national team, but uh, he was a Dallas native. He helped, um, he's actually started his own academy down in Dallas. And uh, the NTX squad it was an amateur team that started oh, about seven years ago. And when they made it to the cup, uh, they, I guess, convinced Jose Berkiaga to join them. Jose Berkiaga played, I don't know, like 10 years in MLS. He had a lot of MLS appearances, had some pretty good goals. Uh, I remember there was some discussion of giving him a cap, but for whatever reason, he never earned a cap, I don't think, with the national team. Never became a national team player, certainly. Um... But uh, NTX was made up of a lot of, actually, well, it's an amateur team, so nobody was getting paid, and uh, they all got off work uh, to go play this game. But uh, interestingly, a lot of them were uh, teachers. I think there were like half the team, like five or six teachers. One of them, uh, one of, I think one of the, le the club founders, well, the coach I know was an assistant principal, and he um, actually also played. He was a player coach. Um, he, so he's running around the field, decide, you know, making changes on the field. He's making subs from from the field, which I'm pretty sure he actually was the first sub to come off the game uh, out of the game. So, but uh, they they actually held tough for a half. It was win of the half, nil nil, and the Dynamo opened it up in the second half and won five to zero. Although the Dynamo played mostly. Um, a second team it was a bunch of backups. They actually even loaned a few players from Rio Grande Valley from their USL affiliate to play in this game. And so, um, but they won five to zero. And I just thought after watching that game, uh, I would do a special episode because I myself am getting ready to play in the US Open Cup against Colorado Springs in the fourth round. They're a US USL team, and we'll look at them. But real quick, just to look. Um, only played a couple matches since since that draw at FC Dallas. Got a, uh, a nice home win against Real Salt Lake. Again, nobody's beat me at home. I'm unstoppable at home. But on the road, I do struggle. I went to Seattle, and I'm going to be honest. I don't really know what happened here. I played, I mean, this was kind of mostly a second team. It wasn't entirely a second team. I did have Elise out there. Uh, Kyoto started. Um, De La Garza started. So I had, you know, four or five first teamers on the field. Um, but Seattle just absolutely tore me up in the first half. And I really didn't change much going into the second half. But I came back and uh, Elise scored a couple of goals to, uh, to earn the draw. And so we got a point at Seattle, which... You know, it wasn't a loss, so I'll take it, you know, and it was, it was, it, the way we got that draw was exciting, you know, come back second half, um, so that was good, but I still am in the lead in the Western Conference as the second, the uh, second, well, the teams behind me have kind of been struggling a little bit, Sporting Kansas City, six points off the pace, although Vancouver does have a couple games in hand, but even if they won both of those, I would still be up on them by a point, so... Uh, I'm in a really good situation, and which which is good because I'm going into the Open Cup, and I like to try to win the Open Cup. So my the best eleven that I can put on the field for the Open Cup matches, I'm going to do that. And I've got um, I did have some guys called up, which affected my Open Cup squad. 
uh, Albert Elise, uh, Darwin Seren, De La Garza, F- uh, Funmayor, and Garcia are all called up for international duty. And so, because I can only have five foreign players, as you see, at the, as you can't see it, I guess, because of my... I'll move this over so that you can see. I can only have five international players on my squad. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and make that a little smaller, too. So, um... With those, and also had five international, four, yeah, five international call ups. I was given the offer to postpone the game, which they do that if you have a certain number of international call ups. I chose not to. I said, let's just go ahead and do it. This is a USL team. I still should be stronger than them. And um, so this is the team I'm putting on the field. It is a pretty good team. The weakest spot, though, is, is of course, in the back line. Uh, Jacques, I'm having to start Jacques at center back. And I'm having to start Kevin Garcia at right back. And neither of those guys are very good. So I'm hoping that Machado and Lungvis can hold things down in the back. Um, I'm also having to start Jared Watts as my defensive mid, which is not a great situation. But um, it is what it is. I've got Eric Alexander. He's a solid mid. He's kind of a box-to-box guy. He's, you know, not super great, but um, he'll do it a pinch in this game. He should be up to the level of competition that we're playing. And then I'm, I've got Pena, who's coming off of a little injury. Um, he'll be starting as my number 10. Alvarez on the right, Minotes on the left, and then Tomas Martinez as the experiment continues. He scored. He set the Dynamo record. If you follow my Twitter, I, I which I, I'm going to start putting the link to my Twitter um, account in the com or in the um, description of the videos. So you, and on my you, you might have seen that if you follow my Twitter, where Martinez scored 32 seconds into the game against RSL, and that was a Dynamo record, um, fastest goal. So. So that's bearing well. He's still not. Um, he's still in that what unconvincing or awkward phase of the uh, trying to develop him as my center striker. So not where I would hope he would be. But um, he does have four goals. Uh, he's got only got a couple of assists. So it, you know those number that those numbers need to get better. Uh, his passing is 86, and I'm, I I actually want that to be better for a striker. Um, but. Well, it is what it is. So, we are going to go ahead and go into the game. Um, we'll look at Colorado Springs so you can see their quality. I should be able to win. But the truth is, it's, well, I want to win, right? I'm, I'm setting it up to win. But if I don't win, if I lose, it's not the worst thing in the world. Um, It'll let me kind of really focus on my MLS play. But looking at Colorado, look at their schedule here. Um, they've actually done pretty well for themselves. Um, they've got a lot of draws here in, in recent times. But I'm pretty sure that if the playoffs started for the USL right now, they would be in it. Um, let's just have a look. I think they were, well, they're, no, they're ninth, so they're just outside of it. Um, but, you know, a couple games in hand on Nashville, and they have, well, they're level on points with seventh place. So they are, they're tied for sevens, which is, you know, there's eight teams from each conference make it to the championship playoffs. So they're close. So they're, they are, you know, top half of the table of USL. Um, they don't have, like, the best squad in the world, and some of these guys are obviously not going to be available uh, due to international call ups or, um, not allowed to play in cup matches because of their loan deals. Um, so, I, I mean, the team they're going to be trotting out there, I should be able to handle pretty well. So, let's have a look. Yeah, I'm going to send Garcia out there, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set his passing to make sure. He, man, I don't remember what I have for my fullbacks, but I don't want him trying too many dangerous passes. And Colorado Springs is almost certainly going to sit back. So I'm going to um, go from counter to standard as far as my team risk. Um, so Garcia, I want him to play a very, very basic game. Yeah, a few risky passes. Definitely don't want him trying to dribble. Um, and we'll go standard. 
tunnel. Uh, yeah, we have to adapt whatever's thrown at us. Um, oh, I mean, obviously, yeah. They're asking about Kabiz's injury. Well, he's 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 not anywhere near one hundred percent. Um. Uh, let's see. I was asking me. This is a tough. One. It's a long season. Rotation is necessary. Whatever. Let's just get to this game. All right. Garcia, good simple pass to start. Let's uh, build his confidence. Alvarez to Pena. I'm really hoping that Martinez gets a goal or two in this game. I, I'm going to be honest. I don't know 100% sure that whatever success in matches helps when you're trying to develop a new position, but it certainly can't hurt. I mean, it can't hurt if Martinez goes out there and has a double hat trick trying to make him a striker. And his first shot goes wide. Looking at Colorado there, it looks like they've played a pretty fatigued team, so that should be good news for us. You look at their condition and then versus mine. Um, Pena's fitness is not great. He gets tired quickly. That is, you know, that's too bad, but I've only got him for this season. You know, I'm not going to have to worry about that next year. And we are putting pressure on the switchbacks early. The switchbacks is their team nickname they played a really a really small market but they have they have survived pretty well um they've got a decent following i'm talking about real life in, in, in the united states lower level soccer or lower level football second degree second level and below is very volatile um a club, even 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 a professional club, if they last ten or twelve years, then that means that well they've got a decent following. Colorado Springs hasn't been around that long, but um, a lot of clubs don't make it. Just last year, you had the San Francisco Deltas uh, had their first season in the North American Soccer League, which at the time was the second division, and they won the league. They were the champions of the NASL, and then they folded. Um, oh, Alvarez, good chance, but couldn't finish. Alvarez played last night. Actually, same kind of deal. Uh, he had a couple great chances in the game against um, NTX, the Rayados, and couldn't finish them. So goals, I think Memo had a couple goals. Memo Rodriguez scored... Um, I want to say Quintanilla uh, scored a couple goals for the Dynamo, but Quintanilla actually plays for Rio Grande Valley, but the Dynamo loaned him for this one cup match. And back to Watts, to Alexander, to Alvarez, back to Watts. Let's put something together here, guys. Ooh, to Minotesk, and goal, 1-0. Dynamo take the lead at the 30-minute mark. Well worked goal. Well worked goal. So we poked and prodded a little bit, found our gap. Minotes makes a nice little mini run, and the Dynamo lead one to zero on an assist from Pena. Pena's well, he's he's a good passer. Oh, oh, Pena <laughs> finished that, but he's offside. Pena scored a couple goals for me from his number ten spot, which the way we play that is. Um, although he plays center mid, he is he a lot of times my, our center our number ten at center mid attacking plays almost like a second striker. Martinez drops, Pena moves forward, and a lot of times finds himself in scoring position. But Pena's biggest asset is his passing, as you saw in the first half. All right, so we're up 1-0. Again, we've got more fitness than Colorado, so hopefully Colorado Springs. So hopefully. That means we will um, we'll have a fitness advantage in the second half. 
happy with performance so far. Let's keep it up. Good news is that Garcia, um, Garcia has not made any massive mistakes. Garcia was my big fear. He in shock. I, uh, I normally wouldn't play Jacques. I, w I normally don't. I try not to play my second team guys if I have to. But the international call up situation, really, if, if it's going to happen for a cup, this is kind of went. Oh, there's a goal by. Oh, look at that. Kevin Garcia with the goal. He took some. He played last night against Rayados in real life. And he had a couple of long shots. You could tell he was itching to score because they're playing such a bad team. You knew it'd be a chance for him too, so he took a couple long shots and missed both. But, um, but right there he scores. So hey, <laughs> if you ever happen upon this Kevin Garcia, you didn't get winning against Rayados last night, but you scored for the virtual Dynamo in my Dynasty Builder save. So we're at the hour mark, just looking around. Um, game's over, so I am gonna pull Pena. He's starting to get a little tired. Um, let's not risk injury. And Eric Alexander is getting fatigued. Let's give Memo some minutes. Try and get his fitness up. Memo, I make him available for RGV, but they don't play him. So, so I'll play him. Do a little double substitution. Switch from one side of the field to the other. Find Alvarez. Alvarez to Martinez, who takes that long shot. I hate long shots in FM. FM 18, they take so many. I have got, I mean, I've got them on minimal, but look at that. Nine long shots of my 15 total. That's, to me, that's such a waste. And that's a bad giveaway. Ooh, this is bad. This is bad. Oh, why? By Schweitzer. Thank goodness. Uh, coming up on 80, so let's bring let's bring in and let's use our last up. I don't like a two nothing win. I, I want to use all my substitutions. Mm, part of me wants to let's let's give Malky some some minutes. He didn't play last night. Eric Bird did. Martinez the free kick. Let's get it back to him. So Martinez does look like he's going to get a goal today. This would have been a good chance, but oh well. He is going to play the whole 90, so hopefully that will help him develop some. To go. Hopefully that will make me watch this whole minute. Ball. Come on, let's win it back, guys. Come on, let's finish strong. Let's not give up a stupid goal. In the last 30 seconds. There we go. Memo steps in to win that. What, what was that? Oh my goodness, Tomases. Well, what that is, okay. <laughs> in FM, you play a guy out of position, it affects his decision making, right? That's just. That's just the reality of the game. And that's, you know, probably a fair thing to happen. Um, it's probably how it should be. And so there you see him. It looked like he was kicking it up into the concession stand. There wasn't, I mean, he knew like he was aiming for the goal. But um, whatever. So good, solid win. Um, two to nothing, obviously, in that situation. Excuse me, I would have seized. <coughs> Obviously, in that situation, um, playing a second division team when they're all tired and some of their guys aren't even eligible, you would win by more than two goals. But um, you know, playing Martinez out of position, trying to get him trained into his new spot, and then I got guys away on international duty, so I'm playing some weaker guys. You know, two of them, I'll take it. You know, in any cup 
competition, it's survive and advance. Do what you got to do, right? You don't have to have a big flashy win. It's just all, it's all about getting to the next round. And so we are going to go to the next round. We'll, um, very happy with the result. Well done. And, you know, got some minutes for some guys that wouldn't, who might not normally. Um, I like to use as many guys as I can. By the end of the season, I will have used everybody on my squad. That's just how I, I, I rotate. I heavily rotate. Um, yeah, it also helps. MLS, it's hard to keep guys happy. When you have a squad full of, when you have a, squad, a full squad of 30 guys, which I do, you know, they're going to get. They get irritated if you're not playing them. And even Garcia, I had to deal with him. You can see the... We'll roll back here, see if I can find it. Garcia, you know, pissed and moaned about not getting to play. Um, find him, yeah. Garcia wanted to discuss personal matters because he wasn't getting enough regular first-team soccer. And so I had um, Boniek Garcia talk to him, and um, which I guess... The game, you know, it, <laughs> the game decides who you're going to send to deal with these issues. And for some reason, the game decided to let Bonya Garcia talk to Kevin Garcia. So I guess it was a Garcia thing, but uh, he did settle the issue for now. Garcia dropped the lack of concern. So maybe, maybe playing him in this cup game will get him off my back for a little bit. But I did go ahead and list Garcia for a transfer. So hopefully somebody will offer something for him. Um... I also what my and I'm, I'm we are gonna go because the next day they do the the draw for the next round I think or no, no no they may have already done the draw for the next round um well we'll advance and we'll see who we play in the next round so I um was given a three year extension to, uh, contract extension I'll be playing I'll be coaching managing Houston for another three years until the end of 2019. Uh, and our opponent for the next round is Atlanta United. Um, quickly looking at the fourth round results of the Open Cup. Um, Minnesota beat Columbus. See if there's any cup sets. Yeah, Indy 11 is a USL team that beat Real Salt Lake. Uh, Orange County knocked out FC Dallas. Good riddance, FCD, as I am... They are hated rivals. Uh, the rest doesn't look... Charlotte is a USL team, but they beat Miami, um, who is a NPSL team. Oh, Pittsburgh with an upset, a cup set over New York City, 2-1. to one. Pittsburgh is very good. They are... They are we'll look at them real quick. Uh, the Riverhounds, yeah, look at that, that slate. Only one loss on the season, 2 to nothing at Tampa Bay. Um... We got a couple draws but look at all that green they are a that might be um a team to avoid uh, in the cup and so looking at the round of 16 we'll look at that let's, let's look at the tree i like to look at the tree uh this isn't set right they'll draw the quarterfinal separately um but if it holds like this i beat houston i'll be playing or i beat atlanta i'll be playing charlotte chicago Looking at lower division teams, you've got Indiana, Indy 11 and Pittsburgh. Those are both USL teams, so there will be at least one USL team in the next round. Orange County is a USL team. And Charlotte, Charlotte Independence. Um, so that is the special episode of the Dynasty Builder Save. Um, nice win over Colorado Springs. We survive in advance. Looking at the schedule, uh... We'll try to reconvene. We'll look maybe at. Um, well, I'll tell you what. We'll do an All Star special. I've not, I've not heard anything about the All Star game, but usually the way these work, I, I'm always asked to manage the All Star game. So, All Star game will roll around in July. So, right around in this area here is where we'll meet next. So this is Uncle Sam FM signing off. <laughs>